Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, April 14th, 2019. And I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a really good weekend. Uh, we got quite the long list here today, so hopefully uh, you'll tune in to the entire video and we'll try to make it as quick as possible. Okay, so we're going to talk about eyes, GSS, DIS, PCG, CMU, ZNGA, PPGF, and Marvel. So let's get started. So we are going to talk about eyes, E-Y-E-S. And for those of you that follow this, um, you know, eyes recently uh, did a presentation on April 11th in Washington. And uh, what this company does, they just develop and manufacture implantable visual prosthetics to help create an artificial form of vision for blind individuals. And so they did do a presentation in Washington the other day. And uh, I was actually taking a look at this chart and I did like the fact that the stock was in a new uptrend and that um, the Bollinger Bands were pretty wide. So I do believe the stock has some strength and momentum here in the stock. And I think this definitely your watch list if you're currently not in this trade. Uh, Jim, over to you. All right. We definitely had a had a pretty good little couple-week run here. She came from down here at support level of right around 76, 73, and we broke, the, all, we broke three averages, the 50, the 20, and also the 100, heading up for the 200 on the daily yearly chart at 126.63. So I'm going to pull this down to about a 20-day here. The float on this is 1227 million, no, excuse me, 87 million on eyes. So we got a resistance level here at 112, and a pullback support looks to me right around this 101 area, 102 area. And that's where we were Thursday, and then Friday she had a pretty good day, bounced up with a gap from 105 all the way up to about 113.87, which is put a little dot right there for resistance line on that a lot of these trend lines I have on here are from last year and looks like they've hit about every one of them perfectly even the, the 119 the 120 resistance high that we had on Wednesday it also had a breakout on Wednesday pulled back Thursday and then rebounded about 70 percent from that from that uh, retracement so let's pull up the daily one minute we got low support right down there at 102 we don't want it to go below a dollar. Here's the daily that we had on Friday. I'm going to draw another trend line right here for 108. It looks to me like at 109 could be a support level too. So let's see if we can, right now we've got the 20 at 109, about 110. And we got a resistance level here at 114 that we hit Friday. So let's see if we can get this up to break up past that 120 area and run into that 200 SMA at 126.63 and that's going to be eyes. Next one we're going to talk about is GSS. Yeah so GSS is the Golden Star Resources and uh, this company is a company that's involved in gold mining and they have two mines um, in uh, one in Ghana and uh, they also announced they had some news last month that their mineral reserve uh, increased by 47%. And uh, I really like this chart, and I'll tell you why. This had a new 52-week closing, a new 52-week high. The stock is overbought, and I think there's going to be some sort of continuation. I think we'll have to see how that works come tomorrow, um, and we'll see if there's some sort of decision on the trade whether it's going to go up or down and see if there's a continuation. So definitely keep this on your watch. This one here closed at 453. So keep GSS on watch. Okay, GSS. Pull up the yearly chart. As Miss Vegas said, it did have a 52 week high. So we're going to pull up three year. See if I can find some new resistances on it, which I do. We have one right here at about 481. Another one right here, right around the 492, and then we've got that year three-year high at 565. Can't forget about that. And we got another one right here at five bucks. That's what we need to break to bring it up to the next level. That next level, about 510 to 
517. So I'm looking at what I think would be a, we did break that previous high, and this kind of support level would be right around the 443 area. So I'm going to draw that little trend line right in here at 443. Pull up the 20 day and see if I missed anything here. I see one little spot right here. Could be a support at 434. Pretty solid about that 434 for a pullback. And then at 439, that's going to be your first support. It's probably your second support with your first one sitting there at the, uh, at the 444 area. So we're going to pull up the daily one minute daily three minute I see a trend line right here kind of a resistance at 456 456 457 with another one right here at about 460 no, 464 so we had that year high at 467 that's what we need to break we need to pull back the pull back support let me pull up the five day and see if I can get that there we go five days perfect so at 439 looks to me like it's going to be your second support with a low support right down here right around the 430 area but I think she'll go ahead and continue on up like I said this is a pretty nice little chart you can tell by the 20 day when we had that low down here at 371 and she had that good five day run and I always have a five day plan when I'm looking at trades and I usually get out on the fifth day but we've consolidated last week with the low support right around that 439 which is going to be our second support and with the risk resistance we got a break is going to be the 456 come out Monday morning and that's going to be GSS and we do have a long term resistance on it let me pull up the ear chart see if we can see it we got the 481 and then the 492 and then to the five dollar mark and that's GSS and the next one we're going to talk about is one of one of the best picks that I've seen Vegas do in her options trades, and that's going to be Disney. Yeah, so just before I go there, uh, just to mention on GSS, yeah. uh, they did have um, a presentation at the European Gold Forums uh, recently, and uh, they did have a, a slide deck, and, uh, you know, uh, they were just talking about their production. But one thing I just do want to comment, uh, if you're going to be looking at the stock for a swing trade, or even a potential day trade for a continuation this week, um, is that they do have a strong cash balance of $96.5 million. So I think that's very important when you're looking to swing trade a company or hold longer term a stock. So keep that in mind if you're going to consider it. Always do your own due diligence. Okay, so now over to Disney. So what an amazing stock this is. And, um, you know, Disney had great news. So, you know, they unveiled uh, their Disney Plus uh, streaming service. They had Investor's Day on Thursday. And investors gave the company a standing ovation. That is how much they were excited to hear about this Disney Plus streaming service. This actually sent the stock flying over 11.5%. Uh, they did mention that the service for this Disney Plus will be $6.99. You can get an annual plan for $69.99, which is significantly undercutting Netflix. It raised their prices. Um, the service for Disney Plus will launch November 12th with significant new original content and offering from Disney's libraries and assets coming from the Fox acquisition. And in the first year, Disney Plus will feature 25 original series, 10 original films and documentaries, and along with 7,500 episodes and 500 movies from the company's trove of content. It will also have 30 seasons of The Simpsons, from Fox available at the launch. They do expect the service to be profitable by 2024 and they anticipate 60 to 90 million subscribers, which will be watching its offerings of 10,000 episodes and over 720 movies. Um, now, some of the people were asking me, you know, what are your thoughts on people with Disney or people that have Netflix? Do you think they'll leave? You know what? Netflix is honestly, in my opinion, still not overpriced. I mean, you know, to pay $14 a month, I think it is at the moment, uh, for Netflix. Um, and there's a lot of really good shows on Netflix and TV series that people really are hooked on. 
Um, so I think what's going to happen is if someone's already a Netflix subscriber, I think they're going to check out Disney Plus and then, you know what, they might like it and keep both. Um, I don't really know if someone's just going to cancel Netflix and go straight to Disney Plus. I think they're going to want to first check it out before making the decision. Now, if someone has no Netflix, then I think, you know what, with the price being half price from Netflix, I think definitely that will be very attractive to people that currently don't even have Netflix. I think they'll be wanting to check out Disney Plus. Oh, I want to congratulate all the option traders that traded the Disney stock. We alerted this stock on uh, an option call, and we alerted an option call. It was $0.85, cents and we picked a strike price of $120, and it cost us $0.85. Cents. And congratulations, because people sold it for $10, which is a $1,000 gain, um, and all the way up to about $11. So people banked on that. Uh, significantly. So an $85 investment, uh, you would have gained about $915 uh, profits for one contract. So that was just absolutely incredible. I had one person in the room who messaged us and I did post that on social media on our Twitter. You can check it out. Um, she said that she made $3,500 on Disney calls. Um, so that just goes to show you that sometimes a small investment can actually do well if the news is great too so not every option call works like this um, but you know in Disney's case uh, it worked out great and we were expecting positive news and that's why we bought the contracts uh, so congratulations to everyone I think the Disney chart also super bullish uh, new 52 week high we haven't seen this in years and definitely I believe that all these dips that Disney did incur the other day uh, those are a gift. I actually know some people that are investing in Disney and they said that any pullbacks that they see on the stock, they are going to scoop it up. So, you know what? I think uh, the stock has a future. And now that it's have all these new features, I think we'll hear more about Disney. And I think it's looked great for a long term, in my opinion. Remember, we're not licensed professionals. Always do your own due diligence and speak to your financial advisor. Jim, over to you. Yeah, they got two price targets on Disney too. One at one thirty-seven and one at one forty. So that you know, that's still telling you. I think it's going to go up. Also, this is a very strong pick, Miss Vegas. Good job last week on this one. So we did hit a ten-year high too, which was a five-year high, and then we're up here at one thirty. We hit a one thirty ninety on Friday. So let's pull up the twenty-day. Twenty-day ain't going to tell us much. Definitely tells us that we were down here at 107.32 on double bottom, and she's run up three weeks in a row after that. And then Friday she had that great run starting out in the morning, took off, went up to that, had almost had it starting to work on a double top high at 130.90. So let's look at the daily three minutes, see if I can find you a pullback support, which I think no lower than 126.55 if it does pull back. If it does, it could gap on up break that high at 130.90 and continue on up maybe next week to 137 to 140. And those are my targets on Disney. So I'm going to give you three little supports here. It can pull back to this 129.08, that 200 SMA. Right now we're kissing all three moving averages, which we're turning into a squeeze right here at the 130.09. So that 129.08, keep that in mind. 129.02 is my support. But I see the moving average at one. This moving average will move come Monday. I don't know. Probably going to move on up. And I bet you the spread on these other three, the 50, the 20, the 50, and the 100 will start to spread out. And we're going to go ahead and move on up to that 137 to 140 area by next week or by the week after. I don't know. I don't even think it's going to consolidate. I, with this run we had right here pre-market, and then that run all day long from that 120, that pullback we had with the double bottom at 126.55 and just had a beautiful climb all the way up. So my targets are 137 and $140 on Disney. The next one we're going to talk about is another good runner that we called out in the room, and that's PCG off Good News. Yeah, wow. Uh, excellent news. Um, but first of all, I think people need to know what this company does. 
Um, they are a wildfire safety program, and they also um, are and they invest in clean energy futures. So you can check out their uh, in their website. Uh, people ask, oh, why are they called PG and E? Uh, so they're really known as Pacific Gas and Energy, but the ticker is PCG, okay? So that is the name of the company. They're into utilities and electric utilities, and um, they did have news on um, Friday. And uh, thank you to my friends at Trade Exchange. Got this news. And the news, let me just pull it up here because I can't seem to see it right this second. Give me one second. And I did post this too on social media. So it's, if you are not able to trade in real time, uh, you should follow us on Twitter. You would get these alerts. Um, so definitely mentioned that, um, you know, PCG had the news. And I just got to find it, Jim. I'm sorry, I can't see the news. No, oh, can't see the news, Jim. Sorry, okay. can't read it to you guys. Okay. But the news was positive. Um, and unfortunately, I can't see it right this second. So, Jim, are you able to pause the video? We found the news. Okay, so PCG... And uh, the news was that um, uh, new system strike force that gives PG&E legal protection from the devastating cost of fires, and that was from Sacramento News. Um, so that uh, information was filtered, and uh, I have to say congratulations to Miss Endelar. I mean, she right away jumped into the option calls, and she picked one for expiry for next Friday, the 18th, and uh, she Bought, I believe it was the 139 strike or the 125 strike. I'm not sure exactly. It has 200% gains on her contract. So congratulations to her for picking that up immediately based on the news that we shared. So it does pay to uh, connect and follow the news and to be in the I'm always talks boat. So Jim, over to you on that chart. All right. Well, let's look at the yearly daily. We had a high up here on the yearly daily up here at 49.52, and then that that bad news came, and it's just dropped ever since. And we had a low down here at 507, back on uh, well, that started to drop back on the 11th of January, and then she had a good little bounce, and she kind of found a resistance up here at 19 around 20 bucks, and then pulled back a little bit to a support level right here at 16.88. So. Let's pull up the 20 day, see if we can find anything different on it. I see a support level right here at around $20, and another one right here at $19.56. Then I see another one right here at $21.69. We're going to pull up the one bit three minute. Got a resistance level right there at the 22. She did pull back to support after the news came out to 21.25 after it run up from the bottom here of 18.93. All the way to 2271. So we're going to look at this coming Monday. We're at $23. We closed at 2308. I think it can pull back a little bit to right around the 2229 area for your second support. Your third support is going to be right around the $22 area. Pretty close to that 100 SMA. So these, and we got to break the resistance of 2331 right here. 2339, somewhere right around that area. So you got your first support right here at 2271, your second support right here at 2229, and your third support right around the $22 area. And if it dips below that, no lower than 2125 is going to be your low, low, low support. And we got to break the resistance of 2331. I think it did have too big of a run off the news, but we do. I think it will pull back a little bit and then retrace. So you might get a good dead cat bounce on this baby. That's PCG. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be CMU. Okay. 
So CMU, uh, this company here has uh, been in business since 1924, and they're an active global asset manager with investment offices. They have locations in Boston, Hong Kong, Mexico, Singapore, Tokyo, and even in Toronto. Uh, they, they have a collaborative approach to building better insights for clients, and they have an investment approach. They look at uh, various different factors. Um, but this stock, I am liking it, and the reason I liked this particular stock on CMU is if you actually look at the chart, the weekly chart, it had a new 52-week high, new closing high. Uh, the upper Bollinger Bands were actually touching. The stock is overbought, and every single day, this stock in the past week keeps going higher and higher and higher. I mean, this has been nonstop since the beginning I would say um, even throughout the month of March, this stock's been nonstop. Um, so I think this is definitely looking very strong. And uh, we are in a totally new uptrend. Uh, and this is just going off the charts. And so I think this should definitely be on watch. Uh, for those of you that like swing trades or are looking for a continuation tomorrow, uh, this is a stock to definitely watch. Jim, over to you. All right. We're going to pull up the... Uh... First, we're going to pull up the year's chart. It's had a beautiful little run here in the last week. I mean, all the way down from this support level at 461, about 462, with a 465, and then we got another support level right here, right around the 469, 473, and then we had the resistance up here that we got a break out of right around 478. I think that's right where she closed at, it's 478. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. 20 day right here. And we got a resistance of a double top area right there at 479. And support level right here at 476. So this is how I see it right now. I think she's going to pull back a little bit, maybe to about the 475 will be your low support and if it goes any lower than that we'll hit this top that we had back on Monday right back here right at the 474 area and that's right there where that 20 SMA is so we'll pull up the daily one minute we got to break the resistance of 479 and let's pull up the three year see if we can find some new resistance levels oh there's a beautiful one right there at 481 we could 483 and we can move on up to this other part this other area to about a 487 so it's, it's kind of going to be a slow mover I think from here on out we got that 460 five buck area we got to get so we got to break that five dollars to get up to the new resistances up there around 507 so it, it, it seems like it's smaller but she had a low here not too far back right here around 408 so that's pretty good. That's pretty good little support level. And then they've got the 443. So let's look at the 20 day one more time. We're going to have a pullback area right here around the 475, 474 area. I hope it does not go any lower than that. If it does, we're going to probably see around 470, 469, 470 area. I don't think we're going to get a big, real big spread out of this, but it did have a good weekly run last week from this low support right down here at 461 all the way to 479 so keep CMU on watch let's see if we can get that breakout and the next one is going to be Zynga okay so Zynga you guys know I really love stock uh, this is in the gaming company they're very excited they have um, launched different things like words with friends um, they got all kinds of mobile apps, and I am just seriously waiting for a breakout on the stock. Um, this stock is just making new 52-week highs, and um, and this is constantly showing me a lot of strength in the stock. Uh, we do have this on the option side. We have the 550 calls. We have calls that expire next week, and we also have calls that expire the week after. So Zynga is one to watch because I'm really looking. 555 557 mark uh, for the next leg up so uh, Zynga's on a beautiful trend I mean if you actually look at the chart from December all the way to now 
this has just been going constantly going up, up, up and up. So um, we just need Zynga to get some push. Um, but the volume's been great. I will say as well with Zynga in particular, I did notice there was a lot of block trades on Zynga on uh, Friday. So I think you know, something to keep an eye on because I like to follow the money. And on Zynga in particular, um, there were a lot of block trades uh, at the end of the day and uh, coming in. So what I saw during the day, I saw block trades for over uh, 40,000 shares, which is quite a bit of money. It's 220,000. I saw shares uh, go through at 100,000 shares at 550. And I also saw a block trade of 250,000 shares, which is a $1.375 million of money going into the stock. So I believe Zynga is currently being accumulated for the next move. The smart money is in the stock. So definitely I like it for a swing trade and definitely holding longer term. Jim, over to you. We're working on a double top area of Zynga right now. It did have a pull back here to 4528. This is not a very big spread on a yearly, oh, well, this is a 20 day, so let's pull up the yearly real fast here. We've had a wonderful run off the yearly chart down here at 332, the bottom that came out back last year in January or in December. And she's ran straight up ever since from at 332 up to resistance high that we had a couple weeks ago at 555. She did pull back and now she's bouncing back up to that top. So we're looking for a double top breakout. I'm going to pull up a three year and see if I can get any new resistance. We're at a three year high for a double top breakout. We're going to pull up the 20 day, one hour, and there's your double top right here. That resistance level was right around 553 area. We closed at 552. We did have a, a morning high at 554. So what we need to do is break that resistance at 556 to move on up with this thing. If it does, pull back it can pull back to this 547 area maybe even down here to about 544 so those are my support levels you can stop this video at any time you like and go ahead and draw down draw up these uh, support and resistance lines and we do have a low support down here at 541 so we got to break the resistance of 556 and that's Zynga the next one we're going to talk about is PPDF Okay, so PPDF, I really like this one. And the reason I like it is because you guys know that I love a barbecue. And uh, this short squeeze is going to eventually happen on this stock. Um, this company is the PPD group. And um, this company is involved in various different things, uh, but mostly in the financial services. So um, you guys can check up, you know, of an awkward website because it's obviously not in English. You can try, it, but uh, it's it's not going to come up uh, properly. So, um, but the ticker is PPDF Gym. Yep. And um, that is the ticker that you guys can check out, and you you can see more about the company. But I'm looking at this one from a swing trade perspective and um, looking to see a short squeeze in the making. It also showed up on my short squeeze list. Uh, so we currently do have the stock as a um, potential squeeze, and there are people currently already in the swing trade. Uh, but I do wanna just mention this company, uh, just to give you a little bit of information. Um, they are in the consumer finance marketplace have actually a lot, uh, pretty strong brand recognition. They started out in 2007, and the company is an online consumer finance marketplace. And what they do is, I think I've talked about the stock in the past, connect the borrowers and investors. And uh, they're a pioneer in China's online consumer finance marketplace. And so what they do is they look at various multiple uh, loan life cycles. And um, the company's platform has a lot of uh, different kinds of um, cutting edge technologies and it looks at loan transaction processes and tries to make the user experience friendly 
which can actually drive customers to want to come on here to get a loan. So um, this is actually a really, uh, concept. They actually did present at the Morgan Stanley um, conference back in March, at, towards the end of March, so not that long ago. Um, they were there in Hong Kong presenting at the Morgan Stanley ninth Annual Hong Kong in Investor Summit. So one stock to watch for a short squeeze barbecue. All right. Well, there's the website right there. It's not much, but it does show a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull up the chart. Yearly chart. We have a yearly high of 680. Not a yearly high. We have a yearly high up here right around 845 with a 797 and so I'm drawing a few resistances up here if she decides to break out. We did have a triple bottom down here with a low support right around the 285, and she bounced on up, and she's pulled back, bounced up a little bit, pulled back, and created a nice little cup and handle right here in the last month or so. And now she did kind of break her up here at a resistance top in this channel right here right around the 546, and she's got some different resistances that move on up and they're going to be right around this 572 kind of hard chart to read in a way because she's like a roller coaster but definitely here in the past couple weeks she's had a pretty nice little run from that 381 all the way up to five to the 546 where she needs to break this resistance to move up into this next channel that next channel is right around 533 up to Oh, about 686 with a pivot point area right in here right around the six dollar mark so this is PPDF keep her on watch she did have a nice little run here in the last week and a half from that low support of 381 all the way up to about 550 and that's what we got to break it's that resistance you see we've had the triple top and when she tried to do it the third time and couldn't do it pulled way back and now we're back up in that resistance level again. So I can't wait to see what this thing does Monday. I'm going to be eyeing it pretty close. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be RMED. Okay, so RMED is uh, RA Medical Systems. They are a commercial medical device company. They develop and market uh, laser systems for the treatment of vascular and dermatologic diseases. Um, now, this company uh, is actually, or ha it will be presenting this week at an event in London, and uh, they're going to have a couple different workshops as well, and uh, they recently want to showcase their, um, I guess, the, what they call their DABRA. And DABRA is, means the destruction of arteriosclerotic blockage by laser radiation ablation. So really what it does, it's like a laser treatment that helps to restore the blood flow um, in the arterial wall and hopefully it'll um, alleviate any kind of uh, amputations because every year there's over 200,000 people that have a leg amputated which is directly related to vascular disease so they're hoping that with this treatment um, and this laser system that it provides a treatment option to quickly safely restore blood flow to save patient limbs and obviously improve their lives so if they will be at a trade show uh, you know and looking at the chart and my thoughts I mean they did it did cross above the 20 day moving average there is a nice pocket pivot on the stock so definitely one to watch uh, not a favorite of mine for now uh, but I'll both, you know, I'm definitely going to keep it on watch because I like what kind of, you know, business they're in. But I also like that they're going to be at an event this week. So it definitely could trigger some sort of action on the stock. Jim, over to you. All right. We're kind of building up from a bottom here we've had for the last two weeks at 334. And I was looking at the early high and it was up here at $22. So we've kind of got a gap we need to fill. We need to break a resistance right around the 415 area. So let me pull up the 20 day. And I kind of like this, this, this stock myself. We did have a nice little run Friday from that low support right around 347 to 398. I do see a support level right at about 376. And also I see another one right here at 365. We did break that resistance here on the 10 day. And that was right at 392. And on the 20 day, we got to bring her on up. Bring her up to about 421 
to maybe right around the 443 area on the 20 day high. So let's pull up the daily three minute. We did have a nice beautiful run on it Friday from 348 all the way up to 413 and then she kind of created a descending pattern and took right into about close and then bounced up from that 388 to 398 after hours. So we have resistances we got to meet and we also have supports that we might meet and that's going to be your low support right here right around the 365 area. And if she hits that 365, I think she'll go ahead and continue and bounce on up and try to break that resistance at the 408. And I'm going to pull up the five day one more time. So we did have that 413 high right here. And the next resistance is going to be right around my favorite number, 420. And that's RMED and keep her on watch. Okay. And last but not least is Marvell. So. Marvel Technology, not Marvel the comic books. Uh, so the stock is MRVL. Uh, this had a nice 52 week closing high. It is definitely on a breakout. And I really like where this stock is going. Um, this company, you know, they are into the automotive solutions. And uh, they have all kinds of products if you want to check out their website. Um, they have the automotive Ethernet. Um, they have storage options. They do a lot of, um, you know, self-park. They have Ethernet adapters. They have what they call microcontrollers, uh, where people can use things for home automation with a remote control. They're very involved in the Internet of Things. Um, they also have security solutions for hardware. They have processors. They have, they're into storage. They're into wireless chips. I mean, they're into everything that's involved with technology. So you can definitely check them out. Uh, very interesting company, um, but definitely uh, the stock specifically is ready for a continuation and it looks really, really strong. So Jim, over to you to tell us about that chart. All right, Marvel, it's a pretty good looking website. I like companies that have nice websites. I really do. I think it it beats one that has a poor website. I'm going to draw a couple trend lines on here. And Vegas and I have talked about websites before. We, we believe the website can really make a company, especially in today's age. So we had a resistance high of right around the 2393 area. She did have a beautiful run Friday, all the way from 2292 all the way up to 2293, almost a whole dollar. And really didn't consolidate much, just about, oh, three quarters into the day she did have a small little pullback to 2357 this is on a five day so I'm looking at a support level maybe no lower than right around 2239 2239 it did close at 20 20 2374 uh, so at 2339 looks to me like a pretty good low support with the second one right around this 2356 to 2360 area somewhere in that channel right there is going to be your second support with your first one right here at the 2372 so I'm going to pull up the daily one and I do like this company what they do and they definitely present them well self well with that website so we got three resistances we got to break and that's going to be the 2379 2384 and the 2391 and I'm going to pull up the 20 day or the one year again see if we can find us a resistance that was a one year high let's pull up a three year and see if that brings us anywhere three year high resistance is right here at 2459 with a 2518 so those are going to be our three targets it's going to be the 2421 the 2459 and the 2512 2518 area to break a three-year high and what a beautiful chart this is too nice little pullback found it slow down here at 1474 and we've almost well we're you know 80 percent gain almost 2374 here and last week was a really good run for all the way from that low support of 1865 to 2374 and i'm going to see if yeah i don't see it go no lower than 2290 at all because that's what I'm kind of finding here on this three-year. So this is MRVL, a good pick for Miss Vegas. 
And that ends our yeah, really, And you know what? This yeah. stock, I mean, if anyone would have had this stock, I mean, even if you would have just had this stock back in December, I mean, this is almost 100% gainer. Yep. I mean, it was down in the low 14s, and look where it is now. I mean, this is just amazing, yep. amazing recovery, and amazing growth for this company. So yep. I think this is um, nice even for a longer-term hold. Uh, if you like investing in those, like, chip stocks or tech technology companies that are involved in the internet of things i think this is one to definitely watch and uh do your own due diligence of course but definitely uh one to see longer term growth i mean this kind of reminds me a little bit about some of those other companies that have that are in the chip sector yep don't forget about amd we are always got it on watch oh yeah got amd you got on tip thing okay yep. well everyone uh it's been a great uh review of the sunday we hope everyone enjoyed it. We've tried to keep it as simple and as short as possible. We hope you enjoy your weekend. And as always, feel free to come by. Please like our video. Please comment below. If there's anything you want to see in future videos, please let us know. Don't forget, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, April the 14th, 2019, Sunday's edition. And we love stocks. Thank you.